really devoted to hands-on teaching. Now, classroom has its place, but then we want to take the students out and also give them some practical knowledge of what they're going to run into. Uh, hence the field schools and the field semesters that we, we operate. And we put more emphasis on that than any other school that does this. Underwater archaeology is essentially, at the heart of its methodology, exactly the same as terrestrial archaeology. But we have the, the added difficulty of dealing with an environment that is, is altogether limiting in, in the time we get to spend actually mapping. A lot of these students have just learned how to dive. So diving alone is a skill that you can acquire over years and need to acquire over years. Then when you com combine that with um, attempting to do archaeology in a foreign environment while wearing all of this clutter, it becomes very difficult. We have to deal with time limits. Uh, so with a given tank, you know, depending on depth, we're very limited at how much time we get in any specific moment to actually do our research and, and get an accurate depiction of, of what's underwater. That's one big limitation. The other one is, is actual depth, so we have to worry about, about saturated nitrogen and uh, different the, the way that physics works underwater, how that affects our bodies and our minds. So there's, there's a lot of extra things that we have to worry about that you don't have to worry about in a terrestrial context. My experience goes back over 25 years in this, so I've done a lot of things. Um, we've worked in the Pacific. Uh, we worked on the battleship Arizona, for, for instance. We found uh, whaling ships out in the middle of the Pacific. We've worked in the Great Lakes. We've worked down in the Caribbean. Um, and in this instance, um, I'm seeing the second oldest ship that I've ever worked on. The Kerala wreck is both a godsend and uh, a tragedy in archaeology. The, the tragic part of it is that this shipwreck washed up from an environment where it's been stable for many, many years. Um, and once it washes up, it begins to deteriorate badly. Um, that's when we need to get started, record these wrecks, uh, get as much data off them as possible. Now this wreck uh, is definitely worth the trip and worth all the energy that we're putting into it. It appears to be early 17th century. Uh, we can identify that by um, how the thing is constructed and actually some of the artifacts that came off of there um, look to be early 17th century also. That's extremely old for this area. And so what we're actually doing is adding to, to history through archaeology. There are no historic sources that talk about vessels this early wrecking off our coast. And, and so now that we know that they are there, we know there's a whole hidden history that we're trying to uh, shed some light on here.